Okay. So, okay, call the meeting to order. Um, we're a couple minutes late here, 7.05 on, uh, what is it, the 18th? 18th of September, of July. Um, and uh, we have uh, Gwen, Lit, Jim, Liz, and myself, as uh, Patrick O'Reilly, as the committee members. We have a quorum. Um, we have Todd and the library representative is here also, Bill. And... Uh, Looks like uh, Jean Marie, the council representative, is online. Also, is that everybody? And then we have our and and you too, uh, our Keith. Yeah. Um, so first order is the approval of minutes, which we have in front of us. I don't know if everybody got that. It's just kind of a summary of of what the UTO presentation was um, and the options that we went through. Um, anybody have any edits or changes to that? All in favor of approving the minutes? Aye. Okay. Jim and Liz, you guys are good? Yes. Yes. Okay. All right, good. That's unanimous, thank you. Um, and then uh, the primary uh, agenda item for today is to go through the draft of the study as it is now um, and to give uh, comments and feedback and direction so that the, uh, I guess the final draft can be presented to the council um, on August 21st. And Keith emailed me uh, today, and then we chatted this afternoon. He's got a timeline schedule from now until the 21st as far as benchmarks and stuff we can expect. So we'll go over that, I'm sure. Okay. So. All right. Perfect. Take it away, Keith. Thank you. Great. Okay. Excellent. Good to see everyone again. Um, so I apologize for not sending the, the, uh, the deck out uh, earlier. This is really just meant to be a, in some ways just a visual aid for for a way to to talk about it. Um, so we sent out the the draft um, report on uh, last Friday. I don't think it really got to the hands of the members of the committee until yesterday, and we'll get to at the end really uh, the timeline going forwards. Um, so some people may have uh, been a quick study and gone through it and and had a chance to review it and have comments, but others it, you know make make more sense to uh, to cut talks. Talk, talk through some of it right now and then provide uh, feedback you know, after the weekend. So we've kind of sketched out, you know, the opportunities to kind of review and, and comment because we want to make sure that we're, uh, you know, getting incorporating all the relevant feedback uh, into the study. Um, so by way of the agenda for, for this component of the of the meeting, uh, you know, we'll, we'll spend some time talking, you know, just really generally I'll uh, just review, you know, what, what the goal was, what we're trying to accomplish and make sure that the goals are aligned with the committee and that we're on, on track to achieve that. Uh, and then really look at the appendix and some of the omitted uh, summaries and things that uh, we didn't quite get together in the draft and really what's, what's coming. Um, and then a discussion of the FAQ section, uh, which was something that was discussed, but hasn't really been, uh, been worked on yet. Uh, if that's something we want to include, uh, some some options for that, uh, and then just a, a quick a submission timeline uh, to review. So um, this is the the table of contents that really kind of lays out the structure of the report. Uh, just to to talk really generally about it, you know, there's uh, we've done reports like this in the past, and I've looked at you know, lots of feasibility studies for similar types of projects, and it it, it really runs the gamut of of how uh, various committees and and uh, and towns have approached it. Sometimes it's it's really just kind of set out there. The pieces are not necessarily tied together. Uh, and then there's not really a, a, a good a summary apart from the executive summary to kind of tie all the pieces together. So the goal of this of this draft was to provide something that's got maybe a little bit more of a structure to hang your hat on. So there's obviously the, the kind of executive summary really is the moment where all the pieces kind of come together. It talks really generally about uh, the, the goals and, and, uh, and how the uh, project uh, proceeded and really where the project ended up. Uh, but then within each section, uh, really trying trying to outline uh, the uh, the goals and the approach, uh, and then kind of tie up each sec section and discuss how it relates to the other uh, components. You know, working towards really that uh, that uh, the capital costs and cost of operation, the revenue, et cetera, and then uh, try to put all the uh, the the backup for that. Uh, if you want to dig deeper, you know, in, into the appendices. Uh, where we'll, uh, you know, ha have uh, information that informs some of the presentations, but doesn't necessarily always present it in full. 
uh, or some of the presentations from the process that, that were presented, but uh, only select portions were included in the kind of body of the report. So that was that was really the goal uh, to to bring this together. I will say that um, you know, looking at what was uh, submitted in the draft and what's what we're kind of waiting on, uh, we're still coordinating with Ballard, Ballard King. That was kind of some, most of the pieces that we're waiting on. I mean, I think you know what what can be said about the whole uh, report is that everything that is being presented um, has been shown before, right? This is all the data from our project and this is really just the summary. And so the goal to get into your hands for review and comment in any way that you want, the, the tone, the amount, the summary, the the way, way it's being approached, you know, like everything is, is up for grabs, you know, want, want to make sure that this is the report that represents the committee, but was really to, to uh, make sure that the, the summaries and the outlines of the findings were really the pieces that were in there and maybe, and some of the kind of the data, especially the appendices is, is something that can fall, follow along later. Um, and so um, that, that was, that was really the goal. And so I welcome comments on that and well, we can return to that in a second. In, in a second, uh, for the next couple of minutes, I, I'm just gonna go through really some of the pieces in yellow that were uh, not submitted. And there's some questions I know about some of the uh, the dummy text that was using that 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 was really just to show you know the approximate amount of text that we use that we use it was it was in light gray it's just it's just dummy text uh, and that will be that will be filled out as we come along. Um, so do you, you know, want just, any comments or thoughts when you hit a section? Do you want us to hold those or how do you? Um, now, now would be a, a perfect, a, a fine time to talk about it. I mean, there's the, we, we or we could go through the pieces that are, are missing and, and maybe we could see or if any of those answer the questions, but I'm happy if we want to stop, pause here and, and, and get some initial feedback. Sure. Yeah, no, I get my, I can just so as committee members know, how do you want to receive it? You know, I'm happy when they go back for a final review and we go over the timeline, I can receive those and then them, submit them holistically to him. But it's just far as some of the, key points that we talked about last time. And I don't know when you go to a page, if we want to stop and talk about that page, or you just want them, you know, or you just want to go through your piece and then we can come back to these. I just yeah, want to interrupt. Me, yeah, yeah. Let me let me just go through the pieces that are yeah. that are forthcoming and then I have this this page yeah. repeated and we can come back to that. Um so just just quickly this is uh kind of two versions of a previous report from a from a different previous pally that Ballard King worked on. We, we would actually probably reformat uh, most of their work just to make sure it looks cohesive. Um, but you know this is this is the kind of a, a market analysis and summary that we would be anticipating. So demographic uh, information about the primary service a service area, uh, anticipated part participation number. Really this is uh, within the section number two with the context. And so this is you know, surveying the past documents uh, and, and the work that has been previously done by the town, uh, and then really kind of setting this up, the context for where this project is, is working within. And so the, um, you know, really just the kind of bullet pointed uh, immediate uh, pieces, we, we don't necessarily have the, the same survey, that survey work was really done uh, in a couple of formats before this project began, but um, certainly some of the summaries of, uh, of both uh, the the context broadly in terms of the national and regional uh, project uh, project info, um, and then comparable uh, facilities, et cetera, um, and then pulling out really what we talked about already in the meetings. You know, here's just a, another version where they worked out. Uh, uh, this is kind of their own version of a um, um, how would you say it. Executive summary for the market review. I would imagine it'd be pretty pretty similar for for our project, also being in New England, uh, and and being about this amount of information. But again, this is you know really something. If you recall when Scott met with the committee back in I think it was uh, October October or first week in uh, November, um, you know that would really be summarizing uh, kind of that that information there. Um, and then looking at uh, leading into the cost estimate and subsidy and cost recovery, um, you know, this, this is data, you know, from our, uh, from Darren's presentation uh, earlier this spring. Uh, and I, I would imagine that, you know, the kind of important salient information about how we're structuring the revenue uh, and operational assumptions. Um, and then also, let's just have a repeat there. Uh, and then the projection for, uh, for, the expenses, you know, really just kind of pulling out really the the, the big pieces that feed back up into uh, the um, 
the total cost and uh, the executive summary. Um, and then, you know, we did not include anything in the appendix, but here's, you know, we're, we would be probably synthesizing, if not just including wholesale, um, some thoughts on uh, or, or our survey of, of the three facilities that we visited all together, as well as um, comments from the committee. Um, and, and if you recall, we gathered comments in a, in a Google Docs. So this is kind of a synthesis of that. Um, and then also we had a, a productive meeting on the design side. Um, with the library, uh, the library committee, uh, with um, with the director of the library and uh, and also the liaison, uh, and and this was the slide where we kind of summarized re really the a really sub substantive conversation that we had. So that's that's important information uh, that really informed uh, how we looked at uh, at especially some of the meeting room uh, and. Um, um, and instruction classroom and theater uh, programming. So this is, this is important information. So this is, but we'll, we'll just include it in the appendix, uh, but we make reference uh, to it within some of the summaries for the pro in the programming section. Uh, and then uh, the backup and as much uh, kind of raw data from our various public meetings and charrettes. Um, the public meeting presentation would really just be a, a list of the, a list of and links to the public meetings and links to these presentations. Um, which we found helpful. So in a PDF, you could click onto it and listen to really the whole process as it went through. And then uh, the, the presentation material and summaries uh, um, as much as we have them at the various events that we've done. And then of course the uh, cost estimate will include in full from PMNC. And then the soft cost, the soft cost breakdown, we actually did, uh, not include the breakdown in the um, um, uh, in the presentation from June thirteenth, but uh, this will be included and is worth worth review. Uh, and certainly, we will distribute this deck afterwards if people want to look at our assumptions uh, for how we got the soft costs uh, with escalation and how we kind of um, knit that into the the final cost uh, cost breakdown. Um, and then really the, the backup from uh, from Ballad King on uh, on all the assumptions that they worked with the uh, with Todd to to pin down in terms of full time staff, um, and then you know credit card fees, uh, etc., uh, and and funding of a replacement fund, um, and then something that was uh, in that was distributed, um, but we talked about maybe putting it in the appendix was, was like an idea about uh, potential funding sources. So that'd be another thing worth discussing whether or not this is something worth worthwhile including or 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 omitting. But really, this is kind of a first pass from Darren about um, you know ways that that this could be um, could be funded and and, and opportunities there. Um, so that that's the extent of what we have, the purpose that we we're trying to uh, to to do, and then the pieces that are that are forthcoming. Again, just everything should be you know familiar but you know, formatted. And then for the next go, go around in places where we don't have the summary, uh, which is mainly uh, related to the, the operational analysis uh, and the substream co cost recovery, and then the service area market summary, that will that'll be another piece worth uh, worth reviewing when that, that comes in. And I might be able to um, circulate um, a version of that um, before the next, next draft, if it would be helpful, because um, I'm expecting that um, next week. But happy to pause here for anyone who has immediate comments or or open it up um, for discussion. Sure, I think we all have some notes. Um, Aaron, Todd, you want to start? Yeah, my notes just going through summer, um, just trying to capture. And then you've got it on the agenda item was the FAQs. We can talk about when we get to that point. Um, but some of the things we talked about last meeting that I just I know we're going to see some of the data on the. On the front, but like on the executive summary page, page five, um, under the summary findings, it says three potential town owned parcels were analyzed. I'd like to see that reworded where it was four and one was eliminated um, prior to the full breakout one because we did look at the basketball court and its court. Because I think that's a question the FAQ people ask, like, why didn't we look at that site? Because mm -hmm. that was a site that was mentioned in previous reports and previous studies. So right. I just want to make sure we educate the public that we did look, but based on the percentage of wetland, we just removed it before we studied it. There were four that we actually quote unquote considered, but were there more sites that we looked at? No, so there four? was, the, we looked at the four town owned sites within the bubble that we yeah. had discussed. 
and before we had them do the test bits, we eliminated the basketball yep. and yep. Well, just because it was high percentage wetland um, in the mitigation costs would have just been probably just yeah. Um, so that was one thing there that I saw. Um, and I know we chatted about it briefly, Keith, and so did Patrick and I. But I know we talked last meeting about having the focus be on option one as thinks best meets the charge. Um, but somewhere in here, and I and if I missed it, I apologize. Um, just at least some input regarding option two and three and why they were, um, you know, what they didn't do. And in my notes, I had written, you know, uh, two, you lost the parks building and some of the amenities, and three was an athletic center versus a community center. And so I just want to make sure that those things are reflected because uh, I think that was part of our discussion last meeting to show our due diligence. We just didn't go with the biggest and the most expensive. We made choices on there. So um, I don't know how we reflect that without taking focus away from one. So something to think about. And obviously, we can have comment. Um, Is there, Keith, do you just want to provide feedback on that comment? Because I think that's kind of important. I think it's good to know the context that, you know, there were many things considered. Obviously, you're going to talk about the different programs and the different services in the building that we looked at and some we included, some we did not. Um, what, what do you think about that? that no, that sounds great. I, I was actually going to pro provide within um, um, within that section, there's kind of a section for additional kind of qualitative information about it. I was, So the one piece I'm going to Sorry, one moment I was trying to drag over. I actually have the report that we can look at it. Um, sorry. Okay. Yes, I, I, I like the idea, short, short answers. I, I think that seems great. I was gonna add a couple of images of all the sites uh, and then I have an area for um, Kind of blank area where I was going to provide a little more qualitative um, reflection on that. I mean, one one thing to especially worth, I don't know, if we want to highlight or just you know make mention of it that the uh, selected site that we did the test fit on was also um, uh, not it was not the highest score in the um, uh, in in the matrix, and so there's there's reasons to to talk about um, yes. you know why that why that was not selected and the things that we thought uh, the other sites did better that. Um, or were, were, it was more probable to review it in less of a just you know straight up numbers um, term, numbers manner. Um, well, you, we would be able to do the same thing for the options. You know, where one is one is obviously the choice, but you know, just to talk about two and three a little bit, so they just don't, so people realize we did do that exercise. Uh, the cost options. Yeah, I'm sorry, the cost options. Just and the reason why, because again. I'll make mention when we do our presentation discussion, I think one of the highlights for people to understand is, and we've gone through the process, but community center versus athletic center, and knowing and that's a big difference as far as service level and some of that piece, so. Uh, yeah, sorry, I, I rem yes, if if that's, okay. if if we'd like to include, I thought I was under the assumption that we, we want to uh, make it clear that, um, yeah, we did. We did give you the direction that th this was the the option that the committee unanimously agreed was was the one we wanted to put forward, uh, at least at this point, to the council for them to consider. Um, but I, I think Todd is trying to just make the point that somewhere it could even be in an appendix. Just talk about the other sites that that we looked at and and the buildings on those sites and what we, you know, the kind of the reasoning to that they were not selected. Oh, okay, this you're talking about for the um the sites and not the no uh, both well, both both. both okay okay yeah that's something I can I can definitely include. people can see that you know what we looked at and what we did yeah it doesn't yes. have to, it can be an appendix it can be information as long as it's referenced in there that it can work with right it, right it and discuss yeah so um and then my only other notes in there. Um, trying not to be nitpicky, but I think if we can be consistent throughout on um, page 33, where there's the room lap pool sheet. And again, this is just me being picky, but um, 
it was a point of discussion and it's, and it's a cost for us to save any other option. On that diagram, if we can just have the elevated spectator seating on that label, um, you know, because again, there's a cost and a breakout um, there. And, and that would be the same uh, true on page 36. Uh, the gym and the walking track slides. Sorry. Elevated track. Uh, nope, right back. Uh, yeah, right there uh, on the header key. Uh, gymnasium and elevated walking track. Because again, uh, I think option two and three had uh, walking areas on the ground. And so that just tells people why it's, it, it's an added cost, just in a consistent wording. Yep. Um, and then what was 53? Um, the two other things, and I don't know where they go, but on page 53 and it's blank, where it says SCS offices, um, I didn't find mention of in the, and, I, and again, I apologize if I missed it. Um, this build cost includes putting the park shop there, parks and ground shop, as well as athletic field. So those are those are co site costs. Yeah, so if I, I miss that, I apologize. Yeah, I have the athletic fields. It's, it's on a diagram, but it's not like, didn't look like it was called out. Called out, just so people there. think that construction cost includes replacing those two items. So it's just, a, it's different if we built the center right over there, you wouldn't be replacing those two things, so. Okay, um, so so add, uh, add like a, a room sheet essentially for the fields and for the shop space? I think so. I think because that that's what the whole PMC breakout includes. So um, I think that would just it would call that it's just not about the building. The building it's about replacing items. And again, we understand if it was that site. What, what do you the, the fields and then what all you what do you call uh, the parks and grounds parks and grounds shop? Okay. Yes, parks and grounds shop. Because those are built into that PMC estimate, and that's. That's really all I had okay. as far as just quick things. Can you see most of it? Can I go? I just found two typos. What those I know I like one. <laughs> Lay it on me. <laughs> um, page five, the use of the word surfeit, uh -huh. I think is incorrect. Okay. And um, I, do you mean deficit? There's a deficit of community meetings rooms. That's what I remember us discussing that there weren't enough community. What does surfeit mean? Is that a word? Like, nobody knows what surfeit means here? anyway. In the middle of fair, surfeit means five. excessive. Under the it would be the opposite like, of what we found. Right there somewhere. Oh, thank you. Good. Oh, yeah. I, will, I was going to look that up. I had I did look it up. It, it, means, it, it is a word. I didn't think it was a word either. Um, but it means excessive, which I think is the opposite of what we found. We found there's not enough meeting space, not too much. Correct. Yep. Um, I'll make that that change. And the other typo is on page 14. Is it is it just let me yep. sorry before you go on? Is it is that something saying that they're is enough community meeting space in this design? The way that it's written, it does say that, but then I think that's the opposite of what we found. Great. Because we built in community meeting space in our yeah, build plus out. the library background. Yeah. There, but it's so yeah, it should be in the findings that there is a deficit. Def a deficit would be the I think the right word. Correct. Yep. That that was the intention. Yeah. Uh, okay. Our yeah. our surveying found that there were there was insufficient community meeting space. And meeting rooms, especially. Um, the other one is um, page 14 under community survey, second paragraph, middle of the paragraph, over half, it, but it's H A L S instead of F. Thank you. Um, and then one more question I have on that same page where under 2022 parks and facilities master plan, you say in the end of that first paragraph um you talk about um national standards and i'm not sure what national standards you're referring to so in our parks and facility master plan we got ranked in and on the national parks and rec level there's 
based on population, there's certain standards for volume. So for how many people we have, there should be so many tennis courts per person or so many. Oh, and, okay. and then they also rank this on areas. And I'm, I'm drawing a blank on the total areas. But let's say there was 15 areas. We did excellent in 10. Uh, we have work to do in two. And three, we can never do because one was aquatics and one was uh, child care space. So there was areas that were unobtainable for us to check the box. And so mm -hmm. I think that's what that's referring to. So, so maybe should we have a little more discussion on that? So that's clear because I didn't know what that meant. And I think what you just said is really good information yeah, to put in exactly. the appendix also. Yeah. Like in, in the other reports. Section. Yeah, so maybe we just put an appendix, a little um, title in there or and can have it as an appendix. Yeah, for um, the other reports. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Would you like to include them in full or or links to? I think you you can find links. them. Yeah, I think links are fine. That's fine. Yeah. Yep, sounds good. I we we definitely that's uh that that area down here is exactly where we do. It's gonna be another sheet where it's we've got all of the all the everything we've made mentioned, especially in, in the other parts, will be linked there. Yeah. 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 So when I think, and I'm just making a note here, and when we talk about the presentation later, that's probably a good piece that I could talk about. Well, that's a good data point yeah. for sure. What, when was that done? Uh, last... That finished last spring. Okay, so it's fresh. It's fresh, yeah. Pretty yeah. fresh. Yep. So I'll make a note there so we get that. Perfect. Thanks. That's all I had. I had a, and we'll go to uh, Jim and Liz too. Uh, I just. In the executive summary, and actually, I just had this overall problem with how we've worded this in several different instances. I know when we talk about the, the projected project cost, and we say that's basically today's dollars if this happens in the next two years, year and a half, sure. or something like that, that you actually start to start construction of the project. How do we get it conveyed clearly and concisely that we are not suggested, suggesting that this go to the voters like in June of 25, right. but that it's it's purely a financial, you know, cost of cost of money today versus cost of money four years from now, eight years from now, what have you. I, I just, it, the way it reads to me, and, 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 I, and I've been involved in this, I understand how other people might read that and say, it's it's the it's this dollars and we want to build it in 2026 like jumping to that conclusion which is not a conclusion that we're making or the council is making you know this is just in today's dollars this is what this would cost assuming that you start construction in 18 months or so which is not which is yeah. in all in every realm of reasonability never going to happen right so and, I, and i know it's in it's it, it's later yeah. But I'm in the summary of costs, it just kind of jumped out at me again. And we and we had this discussion, Todd. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, it makes total sense. Um, and I don't know how to word it. I can't give you a suggestion, Keith. I don't I don't know how you explain to people that we're not advocating or pushing this to be voter approved so that it could start in 2026. That's not even up in our charge. Do you think it makes sense, Keith, in that section to maybe dive a little deeper and say, you know, uh if you know, just to be honest, if construction started in 2026, uh, this is the estimate because you already did the next three. You know, it was four percent, then it compounded eight point sixteen. Even if you just finish that sentence with the costs would be anticipated to increase if the project was approved and every year. commenced after yeah, that. I just just think calling it out there. We're not saying right. we're expecting this in November. We're saying. It's never cheaper in November, and then every cost afterward. If you were doing this building, right, right, yeah, so I guess the, the the soonest it could start is twenty twenty six. You know, just looking at the all the pieces that have to come together, and that's how we pin the escalation. But not, yeah, I I, I know what you're saying. I I'll, I'll work with Brett to to workshop that. He's he's pretty good at at yeah. softening or or crafting that in a way that that says what we're trying to get at, which is just right. And we have to pick it. a point at which to start the clock on the uh, on yeah, the cost. And again, part of this education is that you know um, is that there is a cost escalation yeah. the longer you wait, no matter when you choose. So, um, but that's a that's a public choice when you get to it, right? Um, and that is explained when you talk about the costs and you have the escalation and the, and the, the hey, I can't find it either. I know, I know it's in here. Sorry. 
Is that page 81, maybe? Yeah. 81? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. On that but 99.9% .9 of the people are going to are gonna read the executive summary and never get to page 81. Yeah. Right. right, and that's not going to jump out at them at that that nuance there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so you know, uh, I wonder if it's worth changing this terminology and say, you know, twenty twenty four ballot. That's you know, maybe project initiated in twenty twenty four or something like that, or project approval in twenty twenty four, and kind of take I, out the. Yeah, I mean, I think it's fine there the way that it's people. Yeah. I don't know, just, I, 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 I agree should, with should, Patrick, something needs to be should there. Should we just say, if this was built in the next 18 months, this is what it would cost, and leave it at that. In today's dollars. In today's dollars, yeah. however you want to word it. Yeah, it's more yeah. hypothetical. Yeah, because right. this this we don't know either. Like, that that $89 million number could be could, could be, be 81, could be, could be 100. Could be 100. Right. And we, that's just pure speculation. Right. I mean, with some historical data behind it. Yeah. Yeah, so I think something like that. I like that approach better than some saying work. Mm -hmm. In today's dollars, let's see what it dollar, This building this would be cost. This, yeah. yeah, this building on this site in today's dollars would be. Yes. Yep. Without putting the dates on it, maybe. And then you can still leave that reference point there, Keith, in the graph when we get to it. But if they fire the executive summary. Yeah. Again, the goal is for people to read through this and not make assumptions or make judgments without reading the whole thing because they because they don't understand it. Right. I just don't want to I don't want to miss in, inadvertently mislead no, somebody. I agree. Yeah, those numbers are going to be updated anyway when it does go to a well again when we right. get to when you look at when Keith uh, mentioned the soft costs and when you look at that table, those are all estimates. I mean yeah. so there's 20 million dollars in soft costs and some of those are you know 35%, 20%, 10%, you know, and that that's estimates based on historical data. But when we go to do it, whenever that is, it could be 18 and it could be 25. In fact, I mean, it's just, it's best data at this point in time. So I don't get yeah, agree. We don't want to misrepresent anything and we just want to give the facts and then the data will update when ever if the button gets pushed. Right. So right. I would agree with that. Liz, do you want to go next if you have comments on this draft? You're muted, by the way. Yes, there you go. thank you. <laughs> um, I agree with everything that everyone has said. I don't have anything else that I have found so far. Um, but I agree with everything that everyone has been saying, for sure. Especially the typos. <laughs> 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 Jim, uh, I I don't have anything to contribute right now. Okay. Bill, did you have anything that you wanted to follow? Well, Gwen identified the things that I had kind of circled typos and of that nature. I did think that on page fifty-eight, the selection of a proposed site amongst them all is a big deal. Yeah. Uh, I think that's what that and obviously the cost of the project uh, and the elements of the uh, proposed program are are the big a bunch of the biggies. So I thought, and while I thought Utah did a good job of identifying bullet points of why this was a good site. There's no effort to say, and the score sheet puts them right side by side. Yeah. I mean, that's you know, part of the problem is to say, why is one selected over another? Yeah. Uh, so I just thought that was yeah. worth. Maybe there's a way in the narrative, because I think a lot of our, the, the, the two sites were so close in ranking. I think it came down to, uh, and again, to make sure we highlight it was the contiguous parking of the of the uh, ice rink site, um, playground, um, and uh, gave us some natural barriers to hide some of the things that you know you don't want to see in a building. I think were the three things that that I remember 
that separated that from the uh, Memorial Park site. And, and I would add, I agree with what yeah. you just said, but I would add that that space is seriously underutilized compared to Memorial Park. Gotcha. There'd be howls the value of it if we if we presented a proposal to put it in Memorial Park, which is a treasure yeah. in a, in the community. Yeah. Whereas that shed and that whole area that we're talking about, right. that isn't any treasure. Right. <laughs> so yeah. that and I think having a little bit more narrative about the other two sites that we didn't pick and why we didn't, which Todd made a point of okay. earlier, yeah. it could be right here on these two pages, eight, what is so 60 and 61. Yeah, exactly. So I can fill that out right here. I think that's that's the kind of area I'd set aside and I'll, I'll uh, to kind of give a little yeah. more qualitative review of, of of these and, you know, the plus and the minus, and I'll probably take out some of the, some of the notes here. Yeah, that all, yeah. that all makes a ton of sense. Yeah, because that was on my presentation when we talked about how uh, uh, was uh, land choice and why when we do the presentation. Um, again, we were asked to focus on for, well, town all the sites first. So yeah. again, when we do the presentation piece, those are highlights. Yeah. Is it worth mentioning, and I don't know if we actually, I know we kind of, Oh, I thought it. I don't know if I said it out loud or not, but that none of these sites that we picked could be used for anything much bigger than what we're putting on it. Any other type of community yeah, no, building, I, really. Yeah, no, I think what we're max, I mean, I would leave that the key. We're pretty much maxing out the site capacity wise based on the building and the parking spaces and. Yeah, for the most part, you know, we parking is a little bit of a question. You know, that's kind of been ne negotiated, but um, yeah, we're it, it's it's about the size that we are looking for look at, looking at, and we did a site layout that provides some on-site parking and and assumes yeah. that we can use some adjacent well, parking. Well, you know, to, to question was or or statement or thought was, you're not putting a bigger building on this site unless you get rid of some of the other amenities that are needed. Yeah, I, I think that's that's correct, especially if it has other you know more parking needs. And bigger buildings help will presumably have more parking. So it's gonna make it hard to fit all that on the, on that site. Yep. Keith, what's the possibility you can increase the font size in general throughout? <laughs> well, this is two pages on one. Don't forget to so, uh, so this will, will this be one one like yeah, that's each a full page, page will be a one page. Oh yeah, did you have it printed out as eight and a half by eleven? If you print out 11 by 17, it's two eight and a half by 11 pages. Okay. Yeah, we okay. yeah, yeah. yeah. don't need to hand out <laughs> magnifying glasses with each report. I'm um, sorry. Yeah. No, no, you're good. I, I, you know, next time I'll also print the PDF not as spreads. I'll, I'll print it as individual pages. I'm sure that'll, that'll be great. Okay. I mean, I'll make sure I, I like do that. The, the last question I have is. Is this report going to discuss how um, how this is going to be paid for, or is that something the town council? That's, will town, call? that's no. town council. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, that, we have no say. We have that funding sources that Ballard yeah. is going to do. Yeah. If possible. Yeah, and that's that's part of whenever they move forward, timing of it will create whatever options are potential, and then I assume whenever they say go, they'll form a new building committee to start looking at that stuff. Okay. Yeah. So. But yeah, that's why I like that, that uh, thing that Darren gave over that in the appendix. Is, is it worth making a note in here that it was not our charge yet to um, look at how this will be financed? Our whole charge will be in there, right? In the appendix anyway. Yeah. I would assume. Actually, is it on there? I don't even know. Because you know that's going to be the question is how we're going to pay for it. So. We yeah, don't even, we don't even. We yeah, don't the, even the charge that. should be included, Keith. The, the okay. initial document yeah. from the council creating this committee, we should okay. have that in. Yeah, if if someone could, Todd, maybe could you if you could send that to me, yeah. I'll, I'll I'll definitely include it. Okay, you got it. But to answer your question, it's not in the charge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, maybe just to make it clear in the report that it was, you know, yeah. that the next step would be yeah. for the town council and to sure, look at sure. that. I can get that to Keith. Yeah. yeah. Is that sorry? Uh, is is that something you'd like included that 
kind of language somewhere like in the executive summary, like after summary of costs or something or next steps or, or is that just going to be in the charge? Mm -hmm. Appendix or how do you want to, I don't know. I mean, you've got the list of the people on the board and you could put underneath a charge as an yeah. appendix item, you know, yeah. yeah. I don't, I don't know. I'm totally, but I think having it in there for a reflection of what the goal was mm -hmm. and that was part of your discussion last meeting. Right, right. 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 Noting it where it's located in this big document, yeah. sort of at the outset by saying it's in appendix in X, uh, where we identify who all we are. Or we you participate. Could, or you could draft it under where your names are, have a quick little summary of your charge. Yep. You know, highlight someone. Something. Yeah, I think that would be fun. Like under the project team. Yeah, yeah. Like under the project team. Maybe we pull together a quick little summary of the charge, Keith, and then put the full charge as an appendix item. Good idea. So paragraph, I can, well, I can write it and share with Patrick that summary charge and see if it reflects. That's fine. Yep, sounds good. Screen by sure, but she has the one. Um, and then there's I know you went over the pieces that are missing, but I just want to. So we have the lap pool, secondary pool, gym, and elevated walking track, yeah, cardio, fitness studio, lockers. Lobby reception, multi purpose room, multi generational room, catering kitchen, meeting and huddle rooms, the offices, the fields, and the parks and grounds shop. Yeah. Child watch. Those are all the major components. There's nothing to, oh, yeah, yeah the fields, I guess. So the order is a little. Yeah, I was going to say, Keith, at least at a minimum, if we could pull the child watch ahead of offices and parks and fields. And then you can rework the order any way you want. I think it's the pools and the gym are the top three pieces for sure. I, I would throw, I mean, I don't know. To me, lobby reception lockers are not as important as the multi-purpose room, the multi-generational room, and the huddle rooms. I would pull those down. And I might put the the fields like shortly on the heels of the major components of the building. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I'm just I'm just trying to think of things that are going to be of interest and appeal and have the most use. Yeah. Lockers and mechanical rooms and stuff like that are yeah, pushed out. Not really, I mean I've been yeah. not yeah. really Sexy, for yeah. lack of a better phrase. Yeah. Well, what about to adding some comment about the some of these um, rooms um, that, for instance, whether um, the revenue generating, um, will we be renting these out? Are they? Are they just? I think that's on the piece that we don't have yet. Yeah. Is that okay? Right. That's the. The 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 yeah. Yeah. Is that yeah. But I think also um, but maybe it could be on on the room too, like it, multi purpose rooms. These rooms will, will, might will be available for groups to rent. I got these little blurbs. Yeah, we, we do have some of that noted on the last portion. So, you know, here at multi purpose rooms is inexpensive to operate, but comes with opportunities to generate significant revenue. Um, okay. Yeah, I think the Glenn's point when we skip to the like catering room. Is it really yeah, the meeting and the huddle rooms. rooms. Yeah. I think we operational costs and revenue or something right there. We could put a uh, potential revenue, but um, potential uh, and um, and use by the community. Because again, depending on where they're located, as long as they're not 
you know, if they're out in the hallway, they're not buried in, you know, like sometimes you know, more buried than like Tom Hall's conference room. You can get it from the lobby, but yeah. You know, I think those address some of the need for small meeting spaces for community meetings. That makes a good point though, like expanding that that operational cost and revenue section. Huddle meeting and huddle because we talked like one of the big considerations that one of the big points that we considered and what to include in the final version that we ended up with and or exclude was does this pay for itself? Yeah. Or does this exactly. is this revenue neutral at yeah. least maybe? Yeah. And I think that's important for anybody reading the report to know we consider that. So maybe it's something as simple as because again, these are low cost to build compared to everything right. else. So maybe so in that Keith, there's something, some sort of statement in brick wordsmith that you know, a uh, low cost to construct but high revenue um potential compared to yeah, yeah. compared to cost high cost, cost to uh, construct and high revenue like the like the right. secondary pool. Yes. Yeah. Low cost to construct high revenue ratio or something because again these little things again it's per square foot it looks like it's a lot, but in the scheme of things that's five grand versus you know five grand thousand in some of these other pieces. And what about the, the nuance of the redundant mechanicals for the pools and you, you spend, you know, I can't remember what the numbers are, but it was yeah. like about 75 or 80% of the total cost for two pools to have one pool, something like yeah. that. I mean, that, you know, th that type of yeah. analysis that we talked about. Is that a question for Darren? He, did you hear what Patrick was saying? It, yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Just how do we call out some of the choices that they've made? strategically um because and then one of the things i had put down on my highlight piece and maybe something we bring up during the presentation was yeah but construction versus operation versus revenue is not the same and you don't get the same deliverables to your point you know and, and again without and we can talk about during the presentation but like flat pool high cost medium revenue rec pool high cost high revenue you take, to your point, yeah. it, the pump systems are the same. You know, if you take away one, you, you're, you're, yeah. the percentage of that cost is still going right. to be significant. Yeah. Significant, and you lose the revenue opportunity. But as we discussed, we have to have a lot of just because of right. the right. competition piece. Yeah. So, um, and the community demand. I mean, that's yes, that's the number one thing that everybody yeah. said. Yeah. So, I just don't know if there's a way to show some of the decision making around some of those facility choices um, without going too deep into a dive, because then that becomes into a building choice when we talk about which system we're using, also what we're using. Yeah. Do you, do you think that kind of description, you, would you like that kind of high level, like a paragraph that talks about some of the large spaces within the summary portion or uh, within each like room sheet? I think the room sheets is where it makes I, I the like sense the to me. Sheets. I like what you, you talked about. I the think session. the room sheets oh. too. Yeah. That yeah. way, if anybody is coming to this report and they yeah. just want to talk about the pool, like I don't care about the gym, I don't care about the walking track, I want to know about the pool. There's important information to summarize in that room right. sheet. Right. And they don't have to read the whole thing if they just got flipped through something. Those little snippets that throw up the report. I yeah, yeah. I feel like the room sheets are easy to read, so that's where they're going to go. And I think right where he's typing there, that's a perfect place to to put the why, even if it is somewhere else in the report. Yeah. Where are the basketball courts? Oh, yeah. Elevated yeah. Um. Todd, this is Jim Weaver. Uh, on the uh, going back to some of the room sheets in in the the various rooms under activities, uh, it would seem I I don't see senior activities listed anywhere. Uh, uh, there's going to be an element of people that are going to be looking at this uh, oh, that may be more interested in uh, what what's what's there for me. Um, and I, I, I wonder, I mean, is seniors 
a word we don't use anymore or is there just some way to show that that <laughs> there is an element there is room for well taken i'm on the lap pool right now and it's a senior aerobics i mean i think that you know active adults is a, is a term now that is more popular than senior but i think to your point you know senior aerobics okay i see that aerobics, but all of that senior multi-generational um, yeah i was looking at the multi-generational game room yeah, yeah now the multi-purpose rooms. Yeah. Yeah, it's a yeah, around the pool. Um, a lot of multi-generational, multi-purpose, but I think anywhere that it's appropriate open space. Multi-purpose room. You know, it's as much to I think that, that multi-purpose room to that point on page 44. That multi-purpose room, I think in there we could put um, um, lunches, you know, in there, because that's where we would host our senior lunches would be in that room. Um, trying to think of other activities like that. I think that's a good point, Jim, as far as things that we do and people, when they look at what they participate in, um, that would be in that multi-purpose room for sure. Um, multi generation public awards. What is I mean, lectures for all age groups, kind of thing. Board games, public shows, the regular. I'm sorry, Liz, what was that? Um, I was just saying, like, lectures for all age groups. I don't know. Just more descriptive. Yeah. Yeah, I can reread through it again, Keith, with that lens um, and try to find appropriate opportunities to, especially where if there's things that we're doing now at the hub or wherever we end up when this lease is up, um, where they would fit into it. So people that are participating now know where they're going, uh, would be going, and then people that are looking for something included yeah that, that'd be helpful you you know your program and if you see the program yeah. happening in these spaces yeah. yeah help help me find a home for those <laughs> yeah i'll work on those review narratives for that lens do you have i just was thinking of this that you have questions for discussion and like uh a few other things here and there on those one page sheets for the rooms yeah um, you know these were cribbed a little bit from the past presentations um and so i think um like we 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 didn't revisit the sheet when we talked more about the revenue and, and cost so okay so um, those questions aren't necessarily for us to discuss tonight per se no that's that that's it, it was a little bit of a placeholder and also okay. a little bit of an All oversight right. fair enough so okay I'll, I'll make it more more consistent And are we kind of burying the overall potential building layout on page 68 for any particular reason? I know we have the kind of the placeholder size bubble diagrams on page 31 that kind of talks about, you know, this is about how much room a gymnasium would take up. And, and this is about how much room a, rec a lap pool would take up. In, in relation to one another without citing them in a building envelope. And then on page 68, we have the, the fit plan there, but we don't, I mean, I know we're not designing the building and this yeah. is all just for, to serve these purposes, but do we wanna have? Well, I, I think, yeah, I know. I think it's a valid point for discussion. Would it make more sense? And again, I don't know if I'm processing and speaking, that's not always about what's best. But, um, to that point, Patrick, would it make more sense to have that building test fit ahead of the sites as a more of a highlight to get people to understand that? And then you have the information why that. I mean, Keith, you have a you have a logic that you put this together, right? What? Why don't you explain your logic? Yeah, sure. I mean, I think the the idea was like the site comes first. Here's the selection. You know, so first it's we've established the program, the sizes, and then we've we looked at the sites, and then it's taking that first part and putting it on the site, and then. Here's the analysis. Here's the test fit, and then from the test fit, you get the price, or you get that you know you get it estimated. Um, 
So that that was the logic that you work from the site to putting the program onto the onto the site. So it's, it's chronologic to the process that we went through to arrive where we are. Uh, yeah, and 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 just you know that would be the the way the project would go down i mean this is logically that's kind of how you have to proceed anyway just um yeah um taking yeah. the idealized program and then and then seeing where you fit on the site and how many stories it's going to be and the uh, size and so right right and i guess i'm okay with that because i don't want somebody i mean if we put this this diagram on the cover <laughs> that's what people are going to think they think we're going to think we designed the building gotcha so i guess i i understand it but it's that's the this this page is kind of what people are going to really look at. Yeah, yeah. Kind of yeah, I know they're going to look at the site, the, the plan. Yeah. I know. yeah. So. So I've got three things just so I can recap so I don't forget. Um, I'll get you a write up with the highlights of the, we'll add the ad hoc community charge with to an appendix, and I'll get a little blur for you, Patrick, to make sure it just yep. hit the highlights. Um, and then anybody can, but I will start reviewing um, areas to Jim's point, highlight senior active adult to make sure that programs that we're doing now, people can look at this and relate to, oh, that's where I would go. Right. Right. Or oh, this is what would be there type things mm -hmm. in that frame of mind. And you've got the uh, the national standards. Oh yes, piece yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. And you talked uh, about before. Yep. Or the survey of town, yep. current town facilities as it relates yep. to that those, those national standards. Yep. Thank you. Is there anything else we? Big pieces we talked about. Pick this. I know you. I know Keith took some notes too. That's good. Yeah, that was a good review. Okay. Thanks for laying it out that way. It was easy to follow. I think hopefully it's easy for for the public to follow as well. Hey, yeah, one question. Do you have those? I know they said test or placeholder images. Yes. Are you actually developing some type of computer generated image of this kind of possible building on this site? Yep. That's what we're going to be working on next week. Um, okay. it's, it's something something we owe you guys, and it's you know really helpful in terms of getting people excited in terms and identifying kind of the size and scale. Um, but it's it's a delicate balance because you don't want to show too much and make it look like it's too designed. It's really tools to help people uh, really understand what's being proposed in terms of the scale. But then also there's a there's a you know a, a, there's an opportunity to get people excited uh, about the project. So. Um, and you're using some of the design criteria from the open house, the dots, right? That's right. Yep. <laughs> so it translates back to that. As, as much as we can, yeah, can no, please I, everybody. I, I, I don't know what we're going to yeah. do about the ones where it's half green and half red, but yeah, figure something no, out. But again, when, when someone reads and says, why does it look like that? The answer is it's a reflection of people's input. And again, it's just a draft. It's just yeah. I mean, know. it doesn't. It's not going to look like that. Is the is the answer? Yeah, yeah. But it, you you have to provide enough detail to to give a sense of scale. So it's it's tough. Yep. Also tough to stop yourself when you start really getting into yep. the design. <laughs> yeah. Um. So the the plan is to um. Oops. Apologies. Um. I forgot Jean Marie was on. Jean Marie, did you have anything that you wanted to add? I didn't give you an opportunity specifically. I apologize. No, no, that's fine. I'm just sort of following along, and I have to admit I'm working on something else too. I'm multitasking, so. <laughs> no problem. Just want to make sure I didn't forget you. Yeah, no, thank you. Um. So. The count council presentation, or Keith, did you have more stuff on your agenda? Your well, agenda? it'd be worth while just talking about the frequently asked questions if that's what we do want okay. to include, yeah. and then you're yeah. where that would want to live. Um, so this is just I just took this page from you know the last presentation. These are these questions were like came up a couple times, or at least were mentioned once in 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 our interactions at the open house in in April. Um, and so yes, not all these are relevant, but some of these, you know, like seem like they might be, you know, the, a first start of some questions that people definitely do have. So, um, you know, this is this one piece where it'd be great if we could assign this to uh, to the committee to 
to flesh out and and send to me, and we could talk about where this wants to live in the report. But um, um, this is just kind of re for reference of of some things that came up. I did go back and watch the when I was doing the meeting. I did go back and watch our last meeting, um, and the discussion was around. So we kind of went all over the place, but it was ultimately about how putting one. I think we agreed we wanted an FAQ, and we wanted to educate on some of the things we learned from the open house. Um, but some of the FAQ, I think one of the comments was, um, how do we create some FAQ questions to share what we've learned along the way that can kind of shape some of these things? So when people say, why this? Um, they can go to the FAQ and, you know, why do we want an elevated walking track? Or, or uh, you know, some of the comments, and then, you know, whether they're serious or not, but we have the ocean swimming. You know, I mean, you can't swim the ocean year round. You know, <laughs> just, just revenue. You know, just different things or um, some of those questions that we received to be able to put in there. Uh, why not the school gymnasiums? Why aren't we using it? Well, you can't use it from yeah. eight to four. And then when it's programmed for athletics, you can't, you know, the frequency. So some of those questions, I think, you know, and and um, is that something you want, Keith, for us to take on and share with you? Yes, yeah. please. That'd be great. Yeah. Keith, you don't want something else to do? Yeah. <laughs> so again, if, again, I'm willing to get the ones you want and, and put them together on a sheet. So if there's between okay. this and things that you've heard, and that's for everybody, and we can put that out to Alex and Dennis and, and Amelia as well. But if you guys get me back a question that you heard or a statement that you heard, and then the answer, I can put them together. You know what I mean? Things that you think are important, that whether you've learned it, heard it, answered it, um, then we can try to put you know, an FAQ together that, and I think you guys can decide where you want it to live, whether it's an appendix or is it part of the prop, you know, whatever. But I think so you'll get it started and circulate it to us and we yes. can add to it. That's yeah. what I was going to say. So if you could I mean, get to get everybody's creative ideas flowing, if you threw down, you know, the four or five. Or whatever. Yeah, so I'll put an FAQ Google sheet together, share it with you guys, mm -hmm. and I'll put a couple down, and then you guys can mirror. Send yeah. it out to everybody, yeah. and then we can all question on it. Answer. Yeah. 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 Okay. yeah. yeah, that'd be great. Okay. You probably won't see that till Monday, but I will get that. Um, and when will we need to get it? Well, so to you? Yeah, that's the timeline. It. Keith's going to go over. Um, I think he needed everything. Anything he's asked from us to do. You need it back by August 2nd, but I'm going to, was that what you said, Keith? Let's there see. Um, you know, we, we, we I'd love to get the FAQs back by the 26th of July. So next Friday. Okay. Next, okay, 26th. So, so I'm going to say from the committee, can you get it to me the 25th? Yes. I'll put the sheet. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be like uh, 1159. Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Not a town next month. Yeah, no. I mean, yeah. you can send, I mean, again, yeah. we, you know. Uh, well, you're going to get us started. So we're going to get you started. You can yeah. fill in and something you may have, you may, someone else may already created it. So, um, and, that, and you may have a question that you don't necessarily know what the answer is, and we can, yeah, mm -hmm. group, we can kind of fill it in. Yeah. Or a data point or, Whatever yeah, it Keith, before I forget, will you send me the slide deck so I can add it to the website tonight? Yeah, absolutely. Will you send me this sheet and I can share it with everybody this calendar. Oh yeah, yep. This is the last great. page in the in, um, in the deck. And, and so you know, go... so the the first pass, the FAQs, you know, that's really to get it into the the final draft that we'll send on the second. But you know, we can keep working on it. Uh, you know. And but it, it's so we can get the you know the scale the size the formatting and then we can we can continue to to workshop it. And do you, Todd, do you have that that FAQ from the workshop? Uh, when they hit the bubble one that you just had up, Keith. Uh, well, I have the whole slide deck, so I can just cut. That was, I, yeah, maybe just we yeah, could that, throw, that April throw those April those on the Google. Sheet Which presentation was that in, Keith? I'll just pull it off of that one. This was from the June thirteenth one. June thirteenth presentation. Okay, thank you. That'll, be, yeah. that'll give us a good starting point too. Yeah, and again, if we don't have an answer, we just have a question that we can figure out an answer. Right, right. Exactly. All right, Keith, you still got pieces on your sub agenda that you wanted to go through, or are you? Uh, no, I don't. But I, I, I would if I, 
just putting out for discussion and maybe people think on it and send it back. Where do you think that belongs? Where do you think the frequently asked questions? Is that oh. something that kind of tees it up for the the report or is it something that kind of comes after or at the, at the tail end or in an appendix? I see it's it as an appendix. Oh. Well, I don't know. We're near the end. I wouldn't put it in ahead of any of the substantive content. Right. And you said appendix. appendix. But in, is it I mean, it could be section seven if you wanted to, I suppose. Yeah. But... Yeah. Call it out. Okay. Section seven FAQs. Yeah, either way. Section seven or as an appendix. Okay. Section seven. Yeah, so that's fine. Okay. Yeah, I like Great. section seven as well. Section seven. Okay, good. Could you go back to that um timeline you had to, yeah. to August 15th mm -hmm. or 21st, you mean? Yeah. So we'll, we will be working on, we'll try it at the beginning of the week of the 29th, send some draft massing images just so people can, you know, comment on it. Uh, mm -hmm. And then we'll get comments back really at the same time we're, we're, sending the kind of final draft back to the committee. So they'll, we'll include the images, but they may get adjusted in the, in the final, final version. Um, and then, you know, just trying to, to work backwards. Hopefully, you know, we get uh, the final, you know, we'd like the final comments on the eighth and that gives us, you know, three days to uh, hopefully just pick up the, uh, the, the last little, hopefully small edits, et cetera. And then on the morning of the 14th, the week before uh, the presentation, we'll submit the submission uh, for the town council. The goals are so normal to get it to council weekend. I think the council packet comes out like, I think they get it Friday, right? The Friday yeah. before the meeting, usually. Usually. Yeah, well, this is it, yes. Yeah, so, it comes out the Friday before the meeting, so. <clears throat> so we have a, we have a, the 15th is your wiggle day, Keith, if needed. Sounds good. And and you know Todd and Patrick, we can talk about um, the actual presentation and what to include in the slides, and you know how to shape that, and how long we need, so, and yeah, we should talk a little bit about that. Yeah, so I, I, uh, to, yeah. I chatted with Tom. The the workshop's going to start at five thirty, um, and so that get, we're the only item on the workshop. Okay. Um, you know, I I went to council meeting last night, and they were talking about the different bond items, and I was watching the presentation the police did their body cam presentation and it took it took a solid hour and they probably could have went a little longer if they didn't get shortened up and sent. So when I was thinking about it today and just going through kind of timelines, I mean if 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 we had just you know a welcome and an introduction of the committee by Patrick, you know what I mean? Because everybody can be sitting at the table when they do workshop, it's table format. Um, and then it gets turned over to Util. I know Brett said last time you could rush through 20 minutes, but I think there's a lot of context here. Um, so I think 30 minutes is probably a little more appropriate to go through the the report um, as far as that presentation. Um, I think that we just talked about uh, touching base a little bit on national standards and some of the design piece. Um, and then I would leave at least 20 minutes for questions to the committee on decision choices for you guys to answer. Um, you're at a solid hour right there in that breakdown. Um, you know, and again, uh, any sort of question or rabbit hole can, can expand any one of those areas. So just give me the sections again, an introduction. Yeah, then, welcome and intro. Yeah, you know, and I assume Patrick would chair you would do that. Then you turn it over to UTL and they yeah. they do the report and I think that's at least 30 minutes. Yeah. Um, and then I think in that next section, um, I could talk about the national standards or just some of the, explain some of the things that are in here and what they would do for us as a community service to get some of the things, but refer, refer to the national standard. I'm talking five minutes, quick highlight, high level. Um, and then turn it back over to you, Patrick, um, and have a 20, 30 minute window there for um, questions to the board, the ad hoc committee, or it may have to be UTL answering some of the higher level, 
you know, detail, but you can tell me a rationalization about it, and then they can share specific details if it's saturation rates or why or how far the leach is or just I don't know how you never know how deep council will be and then committee members, community members that show up if they dive down into just the general question. So you guys have taken all the surveys, all the information, all the community feedback, synthesized it, and then you teal and Ballard and King and PMC and if the other one put all the background stuff to give you decisions to make, you've made decisions. And so those are based on what you learned, what you were given from the committee and surveys. And so then now it's about just kind of putting it out there for wise. Okay. So, and that gets you to 60, 65 minutes easy, if that makes sense. Is that the expectation when you talk to Tom to have this be just an hour? No, it can go the full, it can go the full time frame. They blocked off from, to five five to five thirty to seven. Their meeting starts at seven, and usually they like to take it. Well, oh, there's a council meeting right after this. Yes. Okay. Okay. So usually they like to have five minutes ahead of time of the council meeting, take a break for ten. I know yesterday we had to extend mm -hmm. the <clears throat> previous to get to council meeting. And there's no expectation that there's any type of presentation or summary given at the council meeting no, by, by any of us. I don't think so. Okay. Um, um, I if sorry. if I could sorry, interject, sorry. <laughs> the, the reason, yeah, God, we didn't get out of council last night till what, 10, 30, quarter of 11. Anyway, I the right so uh, when you do, when you do workshops, in my experience, um, keep it as high level as possible and hit on the main areas. Um, please be sure to emphasize that this is not 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 going to vote in november no one's looking for it to go to vote in november because there's are some people out there who are still pushing that uh incorrect narrative um and and um leave some leave space for counselors to ask the questions but again i'd keep it as high level as possible just because you know that's just how we work as a council. We aren't interested in the details yet because uh, it's not a reality yet, if that makes sense. I'm sorry, I got to move in the other room. My husband's got the TV on way too loud. We can't hear it, it's fine. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, so that that's just, again, that that's my opinion and experience as a counselor. And as you know, the bottom line's gonna be well, how much is this going to cost? And just to emphasize, I liked how you guys had that discussion about, you know, these. This needs to be. These are current dollars, and it's all everything. We can't tell you what it's going to cost in two years, three years, whatever. Um, so we're going to give you current dollars um, because that's all we know. We don't have a crystal ball. Um, but that's that. That's just my opinion on what you know, what you want to present. I would also, I don't know, Todd, have you got, and I apologize because I've missed a couple meetings. Have you discussed how you're going to handle, you know, we're going to have all this data. You folks have done a yeoman's job in pulling together a really great plan. And yet the council basically is saying, okay, that's a great plan, but we need to park it because the school's coming first. Um, and what your communication is going to be about. So the plan, we aren't going to just throw it on a shelf so it collects dust. I mean, how are we going to keep it alive? How are you going to keep it in front of people? You know what I'm saying? Is yeah, I do. And so I don't, we briefly talked about it and that's okay. not the role of this. This right. committee wasn't tasked to keep it alive. No, I know. My advisory board, Yep. their goal, their number one goal in the, Three years ago when they presented their goals was a community center yep. so we had our meeting last week and i think you'll start to see some push from them as far as public outreach to one come and get educated not okay. to say they're supporting this model they're yep. kind of taking that kind of craft of the same thing with them is that you need to come learn before you decide yes or no and then figure right. out is it for you. and so again they're not going to try to beat a drum that says this is the option but right. you need to come if, you're, if you want a center you need to come learn about it and then you make a choice. And so I think it's going to be up to them. 
if it's really their number one goal to beat that drum and keep it going. So, um, okay. I, think I just want to make sure it doesn't get lost. Yeah. Oh no. It's, it's, yeah. you know, there's too much work being done and there's too much peace. And right. again, there's right. So, but I think again, that's not in their charge. Doesn't mean you can't yeah. be part of future things if you're interested, but you've done the work that you were charged yeah. to do. Yeah. So yeah. that makes sense. Yeah. Is it worth mentioning that, um, I mean, maybe, maybe not at that, this particular meeting, but, um, you know, we have done the work and if we do have to table it, when we come back to it, we don't have to start this process all over again, because we've already right. done this like several times in the past, right. different, um, um, with different charges, I guess. Yeah. Um, and we just want to make sure that I think the community does think that we're gonna... I think it's a good point yeah. to make note of. And I think one of the, one of our meetings, Keith, I think Brett answered the question like you could take this off and revisit the numbers, you know, today's dollars versus you know, if it's 16 months from now or whatever. Um, but I think what the advisory board was talking about was how do you keep this thing in front? to know that the work has been done. Um, so when an opportunity or the timing does make sense, it's, you know, it's it's always ready, not just on chain. Right, and we should not have hire that, consultants again, right. this whole process right. again. But we could hire them to just right. toot the numbers Update. and that's a different, mm -hmm. you know, a different piece. So I think that's what my advisory board was most concerned about, uh, having it put on a shelf. They want it on the desk and they want it ready versus being on a shelf. That's, the, that's a different, Process. I like I like that description, Todd. <laughs> it's on yeah. the desk, just waiting to be picked up. It's not on a shelf collecting dust. Right, we've got plans that again. Yeah. So, um, the only other thing that I had that I want you guys to think about, so Patrick and um, we can share information to him, and then also get to Keith and stuff. But um, you guys, again, it's a note from the the last meeting we had when I was watching it. Which areas in the presentation and the report do you feel like need to be deeper dives? You know what I mean? So it's just not um, Brett or Keith reading through it. What are the points do you think, like Gene said, in the report that are going to resonate with the public, public um, and council's going to want to hear? You know what I mean? I made a couple notes here was um, the program choices you made when you show the schematics of the different program choices. And you get to those site pages, mm -hmm. um, you know, those were made for specific reasons based on public information, but also it was strong because it was part of your charge. It was strong offsetting revenue and community good. Um, some of those things, I think um, we went through this when we were talking about the promoter pitch. That's the one. Um, the other private entity I'm drawing one here. Sorry, oh, yeah. Edge. Yeah, Edge. Edge kind of. Um, yeah. You know. Again, when you guys went through your exercise in three options, one, two, and three, three was a true athletic center. And you've got some right up in there, Keith, in the in the, your your um, summary sections about the difference between the two. So I think that's important for people to understand. Um, we've already chatted about again construction operations and that revenue and you know what you get for those deliverables. You know, um, we already discussed the, the process of the land choice and going through those and you know, that was an added charge to you to look yeah. at town property versus private. Go yeah. to that first. And then I think the, uh, you know, some of the things that were reflected in the master plan as far as you know, the deficiencies that we have as a department that we can't provide to you as citizens in a pool of resources. So I think that's another kind of high level piece. Um, but I think if there's anything else that you guys can think of that- We talked about everything. Yeah. But as far as the presentation, and if they need to dive deeper into or down. So. Yeah. Um, I just want to make sure the other committee members have an opportunity to watch this or and uh, comment back. Yeah. So to us uh, in the next, you know, 12, 14 days, whatever it is. Yeah. I will email um, Dennis, Amelia. Well, I'll email everybody, but especially I'll touch base on that. Uh, Making sure if they can go back and watch this meeting. And yeah, they just, usually do a million watches all of them makes it And then just to kind of make it a priority to be present that day when we present yeah. to the council. Yeah. 
I just would hate to have anybody be like, oh, my kids, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> I just, I, I, yeah. I'd like to have the full committee at that meeting. Yeah. So that's seven. So I'm going to that up as a reminder and to watch. Uh, and then eight is open that 21st of your party. Yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. I think that's it for us on this. Yeah. You're good, Keith. Yep, we're good. Thank you for yeah, the right. helpful comments and discussion. You know, members of public like to speak at all. I have a couple of questions. Sure, go ahead. Yeah. Um, my understanding that there's a hundred thousand dollar contract with these folks. Yeah. Is that, is that all the money that's been expended so far? Yes, as far as well, we haven't expended it all because we haven't finished the contract, but, yeah. but it, it won't, it's not going to go over that. No. So, yeah. Is there any money allocated in your budget to pursue this next year? No. There's no, there's no CIP items, there's no, no there's nothing in, in your budget. It's, it's, as far as what, like, but <laughs> backtracking, when the library was done, there were several years that there was two or three hundred thousand dollars given to the library for engineering and, and all kinds given by the town. Yes. Yeah, and yeah, there's no no the only request we made was two years ago for land and that was denied by not the time we pushed over by town, but we didn't get money for the land and then this money was all was all for us, but authorized. And there's nothing in this capital budget that we received to do any more studies or and that's why we pushed off when we talked about the traffic study and that sort of stuff. We didn't have that that dollar figure in the budget. Okay. No, that's just I just wanted to update on that. Yeah. Where we are cost wise sure. so some of these projects is money being spent that isn't out there in the public. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, now when the when the process is over, I can't speak the count of what they're allocated to next, but as of right now. And so the, your charge ends with the presentation on the twenty first. Hallelujah. <laughs> for the second. Uh it's at least the second time for me. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And again, this charge has been extended because we've gone longer. So and we took the break with the school piece of help. So yeah, yes. Well, anybody else have comments or anything at all they want to make, Bill? I would like to say I have been utterly impressed by Utah's professionalism and thoroughness uh, working with us. They, I, I felt as if they've really done a great job. Just wanted to commend you on that. Thank you very much. It, it's been a pleasure. It's a little poignant to have it ending. Hopefully we can keep this going in some form. <laughs> hint, hint. But uh, yeah, it's it's been great. It's been a, an awesome process. It's been a pleasure getting to know you all too. You guys have been a, a joy to work with. And having done this without professional assistance once, I can <laughs> really appreciate <laughs> the work that you guys have done in this process for us. So, exactly. so thank you. And with that, I will call for the meeting to adjourn. Second, adjourn. all in favor? Aye. Yeah, anyways, thank you, everybody. Thanks, Good everybody. night. Good night. Good night. Yeah, let me stop the recording. Hey, I have one. Screen is fine.